Now, if you're looking to supercharge your compost, I have a couple items you can add that'll really kick it up. Ah! <laughs> Woo! All right. How's it going, everyone? Thanks so much for joining us. Today, we're talking about compost. I can't stress how important compost is. If you're gardening, compost can be such a boon. What a great way to take even any kitchen scraps you might have. What a way to put it to use. Then if you're growing things, you might have excess stuff from the garden that you can't eat exactly. You put that in the compost, turn it into beautiful, healthy soil. Now over here, we're composting as well. In fact, we got a couple different composts going at the same time, maybe even three technically. So we have this compost pile that we picked up, which uh, the city of Sierra Vista calls compost. Looks like fairly decent soil. We have a tumbler that we throw a lot of kitchen scraps into. We got a humidor bin going, which composts even our own waste. And sometimes we throw in a lot of the bulkier food items that can't go into the tumbler. That would take just way too long to process. But one thing we've been having trouble with is getting that compost hot. Now with any kind of good compost, you want a good mix of carbon nitrogen ratio. Usually people are gonna be carbon heavy. I'm afraid that's kind of what one of our issues is. A good thing to add is nitrogen to balance that out. And sometimes you could be nitrogen heavy. You'll know if you're nitrogen heavy if you start getting odors or whatnot. Nitrogen buildup, you'll start smelling things. And that's when you need to add the carbon to balance that out. But let me show you a couple things that we're gonna do add to our compost pile to really kick it off. Now, of course, our homestead is off the grid and we live kind of in the middle of nowhere. So getting access to resources is a little trickier than people living in the city. So I had to work up a couple creative solutions to get the nitrogen I need at zero cost. Chris, Chris, you wanna go? Are you ready to go? Sit, good boy. Coming at you, coming at you. <laughs> All right, so we're out and about as a family, taking a little trip, trying to get some things done today. Gonna try and get some some free resources, hopefully. Okay, so we're outside the Bisbee Coffee Shop right now. And I am going to go and ask them if I can leave a bucket for them so they can fill up with a ton of coffee grounds. So I went in there, I asked them, I was like, hey, can I leave a bucket to collect some of the used coffee grounds? And they're like, sure, no problem. But sometimes it's tough going places to collect coffee grounds because like you go to a coffee shop, a lot of times they just throw the coffee grounds away right away. But if you can leave a bucket or something like that, if they're kind enough to like throw it in the bucket, you can collect a whole bunch. I'm gonna come back tomorrow morning. Hopefully we have a whole five gallon bucket full of uh, used coffee grounds. That'd be nice. So I am back outside the old Bisbee Coffee Company flying solo today. But I'm about to go inside, get the bucket of coffee, see what our haul is. Let's see what we got. All right, so we got our haul. I was kind of hoping for more. I was kind of hoping for a full bucket. But what can you do? It's about a third full. A third of a five gallon bucket is better than no coffee grounds at all. It's gonna be a huge help. So all those coffee grounds we picked up, I just spread it around the whole compost pile. Kind of on the inside, on the outside. I figured just get it on top. As we start adding more material to the pile, it'll uh, mix the coffee grounds in with the rest of the straw. And I'm hoping this increases the nitrogen content and just helps things break down a lot faster. I'm also cleaning the bucket, just getting some water in there. I guess making a little coffee for the, uh, the compost pile. Not only can coffee stimulate the, the body, but it can also stimulate the compost. <laughs> And a little extra water for the compost doesn't hurt, especially for our climate. Apparently, uh, coffee grounds can do well to deter pests. So, coffee grounds, don't, don't throw them away. So incredibly useful. Get a whole bunch of coffee grounds, put it in there, and not only will it not smell bad, 
it'll smell pretty good. It might attract coffee lovers. You might have coffee lovers hanging around your compost pile, sniffing around. <laughs> It's the Santa Claus of composting. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> what I got here is a bag of grass. We did a little something crazy. When they mowed the side of the road, we kind of went up there and we kind of grabbed a bunch of the grass that was just lying down on the side of the road. I mean, out here, organic matter is tough to come by. I'll take what I can get. <laughs> but we do have a lot of grass out here. And if you have a lot of grass, something that can be utilized. The compost pile is a great place for it. Grass is so full of nitrogen and so many other uh, vital nutrients. It is an um, absolutely amazing addition to your compost. Of course, you can even use it as a ground cover. Maybe you just wanna chop and drop. If your compost pile needs a little extra nitrogen boost, grass is definitely another way to do it. But as long as we're out here by the compost bins, let me give you a quick sneak peek at our old compost bin, the one that's just kind of sitting there. So this is the last compost pile that we finished, and it has to sit to June. But I'm loving what I'm seeing already. It is really shrinking down, composting very nicely. I cannot wait until June when we can start digging into this and just seeing how well it's broken down. Thanks a lot for joining us, everyone. Compost is definitely another big passion of ours. We love it. We're, we can't stop learning more about it. And it's just always good to play around with the compost and really figure out how to work it and just become really adept at creating really good, healthy compost. We'll catch you on the next video, everyone.